Now we have got to ask ourselves, given the, given the election and given what we know are the economic realities abroad and internally, what are some of the positive factors on which we can build uh, in the post-election post period? Well, firstly, we must see this as an important election, as a watershed in some ways, to give, a, to give the government of the day a renewed strong mandate, having been re-elected, to come with fresh energy, fresh personnel in some cases, but I think my colleagues will say more about the cabinet composition. But it brings the economy back into the center stage. And the issues that have been raised by economists and business people over time about uncertainty in policy, I go back to the holding pattern, and the challenge of implementation will now get serious attention, and you will see already some of the early comments from the political, from the political leadership of the ANC are already emphasizing that. They've taken that message, or they are taking that message on board. So I think what one is really saying, uh, if one was to interpret what, what the markets are saying, or what business opinion and economic opinion is saying, is that, look, you're running the country, you have been running the country well enough to get a growth rate of 2 to 2.5%. Two but we now have a collective will and a commitment to do a lot better so that we can have what we call job-rich growth by addressing the structural challenges as they are embodied in our, our plan for the future. And what is that plan for the future? Well, that is the National Development Plan, which you will recall charts a path to 2030, gives us an overarching vision uh, drawn from the Constitution, what we have promised to do. And above all, it encourages both the government and the private sector to take a long-term view and not and try and get out of the short-termism parameter in, in, in which we have been so often found. It's not a perfect plan, but it's, it's pretty good. And I think from a business point of view, we've said all along in the past year or so, it's a plan we can broadly back. It puts the private sector in a very important role in shaping the future, especially small business. And it's a centrist document. It's a pragmatic document. Given where we are now, given the timing, what are some of the, what I call the buttons that business should press, given the aftermath of this election? I think the first one is to recognize and applaud the fact that through the NDP, we now have an opportunity to get a more certain and predictable policy framework which will help to boost investment. It may even, if you really can enforce the message of the NDP, create an environment in which there will be what I call anticipate, more anticipatory government, more effective consultation in advance, and therefore trying to get more things right the first time round. The next issue where there's some buttons for business to press is the issue of trust. And this will define or redefine the relationship, the future relationship, between government and the private sector and business. It features prominently in, uh, in the NDP. And it's featured for some years. It's not a new, but it's, it's starting to make a difference. And so what one wants to see in the aftermath of the election is that business and government will develop a more constructive, a more constructive partnership model which will forge a, a relationship that makes more things possible than have been possible up until now in terms of both their, their collaboration and also in making things happen in strengthening our delivery system, not only at the national level, but also particularly at the local level, we are many opportunities there. So closing the trust deficit is going to be a top priority for business, not just for government, because trust is a two-way thing. A fresh top initiative, I think, by the leadership of business to see whether we can and must build trust, cement much deeper partnerships, and unlock the capacity of the private sector to a larger extent. 